Hi guys, welcome back to the Hugh Jeffries video and in this video I'm going to be installing a custom glowing Apple logo into an iPhone 6s. This custom Apple logo is able to produce 16 different colors and has 7 different modes such as flash, fade or just a solid color and is available for the iPhone 6, 6 Plus, 6s, 6s Plus and the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus models. Taking a look at the packaging I received this in, you can see it's unbranded and pretty much generic, but I flip it over and take a look at the back. It claims to be better than all previous iPhone logo LEDs, and unlike some of these LED logos, it doesn't require a modification to the backlight, which obviously makes installation much easier, and I honestly believe that that'd be much safer for your phone as well. Included in the packaging, of course, is the instructions on how to use the logo, as well as a quick installation guide which isn't very thorough and their English is quite poor um, and hard to understand. So throwing that aside, it's time to install this LED logo. You can see included in the box is this clear Apple logo and also the module itself, which you can see has a battery tab on it so it taps into the battery line, as well as that middle tab which connects to the speaker and of course the two LEDs which will be powering the light itself. On the other side, there's just a bunch of other components which actually make the product work. Firstly, I'm going to just be using this phone right here just to test out the logo before I install it in the actual phone that I will be using. The reason for this is this phone actually needs a restoration, the housing's bent and it's got a heap of cheap uh, low quality parts in it, but I knew the battery wasn't glued down so I thought I want to test it out, make sure it actually functions before I go ahead and go to the trouble of disassembling a working iPhone 6S. This 6S does indeed work, it just needs to be restored up. The first thing I need to do is obviously remove the screen and battery and then I can pry out that Apple logo, just clean up the residue left behind by the old one and I can place the old one in just to test fit it for now. I also noticed you need to fold along a dotted line uh, for these components so they can actually fit into the iPhone itself otherwise this cable won't actually sit down into the phone. Next I just tested it out here by connecting up an iPhone 6s battery flipped it over and sure enough the logo was lighting up. Now that I know it actually works and functions, I can take it back out of the iPhone and grab my working iPhone 6s which I restored up probably about a year and a half ago to two years. This is a 64 gigabyte iPhone 6s on iOS 11.3.1 and it is in need of a battery replacement as well so I thought this would be an excellent phone to install this on as I need to take out the old battery anyway. Firstly, I'll need to disassemble the iPhone by removing the two pentlobe screws at the bottom and then I can begin to pry up the display. Now, there is a waterproofing gasket or dustproof seal on the phone itself which will make lifting up the display a little bit more difficult. Then I can disconnect the battery first. This is extremely important so you don't fry the backlight or anything else on the iPhone itself. Then I can disconnect the screen and start to remove the remaining water gasket for when I need to install the new display. I chose to do this now, it'll just save me a little bit of time later on, but it's not too difficult to do. Just a spudger and I can scrape along and remove the dirt, grime and anything else. Um, so when I go to apply the new seal, it seals in properly and makes good contact with the phone itself. Next, I can remove the vibrate motor which will give a little bit more clearance to the battery adhesive tabs. This will make it much more easy to remove these tabs uh, without breaking them. Breaking these tabs is a really big deal because you need to pry out the battery if the tab is stuck underneath the battery, which basically deforms the battery and obviously poses a risk of that battery becoming uh, inflamed or having some kind of issue. The first tab I removed actually snapped, but I was able to get it again as it didn't go back underneath the battery. Second one though came out fine. Next, I can begin work on the Apple logo itself, removing the bits of tape holding it down and heating up the Apple logo itself with a heat gun so I can soften the adhesive around the logo, which will make the logo a little bit easier to pry up when I go to remove it. You can see now that I've removed the logo, it is a little bit scratched, but luckily we're replacing that with a new one. Comparing the old and new logos, you can see the new one is actually sort of transparent on the front, and if you place it in, you'll also notice that it's not the same shape on the inside, and it's also a little bit thicker. 
Now that's so the LEDs can actually shine through as the LEDs themselves are located at the bottom of the logo. Next, I can remove the speaker assembly, which I'll need to do to install that little speaker tab um, for the controller board. Now this is actually optional, you could leave this out. I found the uh, speaker option to be quite annoying. Given every time a sound plays on the device, whether that's music or the device unlocking sound, it will make the LED logo go into a rapid flash mode for a couple of seconds, which can't be disabled on the button itself. Next, I can move along to the home button on the display. Now the reason I'm working on this is the gasket itself, which is supposed to adhere it down to the display, is doing nothing and you can see there, it's not even attached anymore. And this means the home button feels really loose and is actually spinning around. And if this is left like this too long, the home button cable could become ripped and therefore I would lose Touch ID on this device forever. So I actually bought a heap of these uh, gaskets online from eBay for about five bucks for about 15 of them. And these are actually great. And I've been using these on every screen replacement since I got them because it stops the home button from wobbling around and it finishes up the display nicely, makes it feel like it's a brand new phone. Coming back to the phone though, I can reinstall the vibrate motor and adhere down the new LED logo into the iPhone. Now that the mod is complete, it's time to reinstall everything into the iPhone so we can show off this new logo. I'll need to install the new waterproof and dustproof seal into the iPhone 6S, making sure to apply it correctly to prevent any water or dust from entering the device once I seal up the display. I like to run a spudger around the outside. This just helps the adhesive adhere down to the housing much better. So when you actually remove the plastic film here, this blue stuff, the adhesive doesn't come up with it. Next, I can install the new battery by applying the new battery adhesive tabs, doing the same process as the water seal by actually using a spudger to make sure it's adhering down to the back of the battery properly, which makes the removal uh, of that plastic film much easier. With that done, I can lay the battery in, making sure it's connecting properly with that mod installed. Now that it is, I can now disconnect the battery yet again, now that I know it's positioned correctly, and install the old display. It's important to leave the battery disconnected in this process so you don't short out the phone. I'm gonna say that a second time in this video just to get that message across to everyone out there. Now that that's done and I've reinstalled the appropriate brackets and screws, I can seal back down the device by installing the display and the two pentalobe screws in the bottom. Now, there's one small issue. There's a heap of scratches in the screen. Well, not to fear because it's literally just a screen protector, so I can take off the old one and you can see that phone is now mint because I put a screen protector on it from the day that I installed this new screen. So, taking the old one off and installing a new screen protector, we are done. And this is it, a custom glowing Apple logo for the iPhone 6S. Although, like I said at the start of this video, they can be installed in the iPhone 6 and iPhone 7 models as well. This definitely looks very neat. The Apple logo fits perfectly in the housing itself and looks totally stock until you turn that logo on and show off the custom iPhone 6S. For those wondering where I picked up this LED logo, I literally just looked up glowing Apple logo for iPhone on eBay and just purchased one directly from China. And the iPhone itself remains fully functional and just like the original restoration video, it's still on iOS 11.3.1. As many of you guys know, I don't install iOS updates. Now diving a little bit further into the functions of this LED glowing logo, if you hold on the Apple logo for three seconds, the logo itself will power on and fade through colors. If you double tap on the logo, it'll actually switch into a mode where you can select the different modes. If you tap once, it'll go into a quick flash. And if you continually tap after that, it will change to a solid color like you are seeing right here. And I'll be able to go through these and show you all of the different colors that this thing can produce. It looks really nice. And although the LEDs are at the bottom, it's nice and evenly lit. It is slightly brighter at the bottom, but that isn't really noticeable. It also appears like it's flickering on camera, although in person it is totally solid and there's no issues there. Will this affect battery life? 
Of course it is, it's actually using the battery itself in the phone, so it's going to affect battery life in some instance. Now is a lot Probably not that much and probably not as much as you think. I did keep this phone powered off with the logo off just to see if the logo itself had any battery drain on the phone and from my quick testings of leaving the phone overnight I didn't see any battery drain from this mod. And playing music on the device will make the logo go a little bit erratic and jump around different colours. Now, does it work with a case on? If you have a thin enough case, yes, it actually works with a case on. I tried with both a gel case and a hard case that was quite thin, and I was able to turn on and change the functions of this LED logo, which was epic. And you can see comparing it up to a stock standard iPhone 6s Apple logo, which is just a darker rose gold color, this is really, really cool. Now, obviously, you can install it on any color iPhone 6s, whether that's silver, gold, rose gold or space gray and that might look better on a different colored iPhone 6s but for this one I just put it on this 6s as this was a phone I had laying around that I needed to do a battery replacement on anyway and on that note this has been a Hugh Jeffries video if you like what you saw hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one also make sure to follow me on my social media link for which is down in the description that's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.